This is video number 28 from digital-university.org um, concerning our series now of different techniques for electrical circuit analysis. In this video, we're again going to use the nodal analysis method to um, solve a circuit with. And now in this video, we'll start off as we did in the previous video writing down the Kirchhoff equations for each of the uh, nodes that are involved. Then we're going to use this background to develop the format technique, which is a much more streamlined approach in nodal analysis. The only drawback is, or the only proviso for the format approach for nodal analysis, it only works for circuits that have exclusively current sources set up in them. Now, there are situations where you have a voltage source in the circuit and using the um, source conversion techniques that we developed in the previous videos, you can convert that voltage source into a current source and then the circuit might be amenable to, uh, to the format approach for nodal analysis. And again, in the future videos, we'll have a problem that demonstrates that. Here, in this video, we want to consider this n network right here, or this relatively straightforward circuit, where we have two current sources, three resistors, and there are three nodes in this circuit. One is down here, and this is where the circuit is grounded. And then up here, we have a node and over here another node. And again, a node is just where different branches of the circuit come together. So here we have this branch, this branch, and this branch that form node 1. And then here we have this branch, this branch, and this branch that form node 2. And then down here at this, all of these come together. We could draw the bottom part of the circuit simply as this, 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 and this all coming into a single node and that node is grounded. So what we do is, just as we did in the other videos, we say well Let's then say that this node is at a potential voltage V1, and this node is at a potential voltage V2. And then what we did previously at node 1, We said, well, let's see. We looks like here we have four amps coming into the node. And for currents that are coming in, we designate that with a minus sign. Here we'd have an unknown current across that resistor. And likewise, we have an unknown current across this resistor. And the way we've been setting the problems up for the unknown currents we're setting them up as if they are flowing out of the node. And as you saw in some of the previous videos, that might not be the case. But once we determine the potentials for V1 and V2, we can make adjustments in current directions uh, once we have this information. But when we're setting the problem up, we're assuming that currents flow out of the node. So here, this would be the value of R1 which is 2 ohms, V1 divided by that. So we would have plus, again assuming it's flowing away from the node, that current. And then here, when we're considering node 1, we're considering the current flowing out of it. So that would be going away from there with a net voltage of V1 minus V2. divided by the value of the resistance, which is 12 ohms. And 
and that equals zero. So here is the equation from node one. Now let's move on to node two. So now for node two, here we have two lamps flowing out of that node. So that's going out, so that is denoted with a positive sign. Then here's an unknown current, and that would be, again, for the unknown currents, we're setting them up as if they're flowing out of the node. So be going in this direction, and that current would be equal to the voltage, V2, divided by that resistance. And again, the voltage drop across here is just simply V2 because this is that here we're taking our reference at zero voltage. Now, I'm going to write node 2 for this unknown current across resistor R3. Now we consider it as leaving that node. So here, when we're dealing with node 2, we write it as V2 minus V1 divided by 12. And that equals 0. These, of course, are just Kirchhoff's current laws. OK, now let's just quickly rearrange these equations. Here, we can bring this over to this side. We have plus 4. And here we have V1 over 2 plus V1 over 12. So we have 1 half plus 1 twelfth. Then we have minus 1 twelfth times V2. And again, that equals plus 4. Now, make this a little bit neater. And let's take a close look at this. So this is just simply the equation from node 1, where we just did some simple algebra on it. And we have this kind of an expression. Well, suppose now when we're setting the problem up, we do it like this. And again, this is valid as long as we're working only with uh, current sources in the circuit. But here, we look at node 1. We say, well, connecting to node 1 is this current source with current flowing into the node, a resistor R1 of 2 ohms, and another resistor R3 of 12 ohms. So we multiply V1 by the reciprocal of this resistor and this resistor added together. If there is a third resistor, coming into node 1, then we would have plus 1 over the value of that resistor. Now, this resistor, though, connects to node 2 of a different potential. So for that one, we have minus V2 divided by that, by, divided by the resistance value of that resistor. So here we have a current coming into it. When the current comes into it, we write it on the right-hand side as a positive value. So here, for our format approach, we simply look what resistors are attached to this node. There are two of them. So it's going to be V1 times 1 over the value of that resistor plus 1 over the value of that resistor. Down here, we're at zero potential. But for this resistor, the other end of it is at V2. So then we have minus V2 divided by 12. Current coming in, 
read it on that side as positive. So let's do this. Let's look at node 2 and apply the same technique, see what equation that we come up with, and see if that equation is consistent with this equation. So using the format approach here now for node 2, let's see, we need some room, so let's do this. We don't need this any longer. All right, now looking at node 2. V2, there are two resistors attached to that node. 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12. This is at 0 volts, but this one at the other end has a voltage of V1, so we have minus 1 twelfth times V1. This two, act, two, two amps of current, but this is flowing out of the node, so we put it on this side of the equation as a negative number. And using the format approach, this then would be the current equation that we would get at node 2. Well, here's what it is with the standard approach. What equation does this give us? So if we take this over to this side, that equals negative 2. And here we have V2 times 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12. Minus 1 over 12 times V1. So we see they are, in fact, the same. So when you have only current sources in your circuit, and once you've identified all the nodes, now what you can do is, this was from node 2, and this is node 1. Again, for node 1, what resistors are attached to it? This one and this one, so we're going to have the potential that we designate for this, V1, times 1 over the value of that resistor plus 1 over the value of that resistor. This is down here at 0 volts. Don't have to monkey with that any further. But this resistor at this end has a potential of V2, so we have minus V2 over 12. 4 amps of current coming into it. Write that on this side as a positive number. There's our equation for node 1. Same logic for node 2. Here we have 2 amps of current going out, so that's written on this side as a negative number. Here we have 2 resistors attached to it, so we're going to have V2 times 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12. Down here at the bottom of this resistor at 0 volts, so don't worry about that any further. But for this one, we have a potential here of V1, so it's going to be minus 1 over, and this should be 1 over 12, times V1 equals minus 2. So when you have strictly current sources, you can, and once you've identified your node, you can look at the circuit and you can automatically write down what your relevant equations are going to be. So as you can see, it's very much a uh, streamlined method. So let's see what we have for so we can actually solve now for V1 and V2. We have two unknowns and two equations so we should be able to determine what V1 and V2 are. Once we know that, once we know what these voltages are, then we can figure out what the currents are in all of these respective resistors. So let's continue on. Here for node 1 we have 1 half 
plus 1 twelfth. That's 6 twelfths. So we have 7 twelfths times V1 minus 1 twelfth times V2 equals 4. That's from node 1. Now from node 2 we have 1 6 plus 1 12. This is 2 12. So that's 3 12. So this would be 1 4 V2. And we have minus 1 12 V1. This is a positive sign. And that equals negative 2. And let's see, we can, if we want to, multiply across here by 12, then we will have 7v1 minus v2 equals 48. And we can likewise multiply by 12 here. We'll have minus 1 times V1 plus 3 times V2 and that will be equal to minus 24. So these are the two nodal equations that we end up with. Two equations and two unknowns so you can solve for V1 and V2. And I don't think we're going to have time to do that in this video. So come back, join us in the next video. We're going to find out what V1 and V2 are. Then with that information, once we know these values, then we can figure out the currents that are flowing through each of these resistors in the circuit. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll finish off the rest of the problem.